Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe subscribe to the RSS feed and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn more about investing in real estate in different markets, there's a show for that. If you want to learn 17 ways rich people think and act differently, there's a show for that. If you want to know how to get paid to borrow, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know why Amsterdam doesn't take dollars or why pools are for fools, there are even shows for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything. Only from JasonHartman.com or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. It's my pleasure to welcome Stephanie Chandler to the show. She is an expert on self-publishing. So if you are an author, a speaker, a publisher, and you need some help getting out into the marketplace, she offers a lot of great services. So I think you're going to learn a lot from this interview. And Stephanie, it's great to have you. Welcome. Thank you, Jason. My pleasure. Well, so tell us a little bit about your background. I guess you were in the very traditional old side of the book world. You have a tech background, and then you opened a bookstore. What a crazy move nowadays to open a bookstore, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. A lot of people thought I was crazy when I left my Silicon Valley job, and I opened a bookstore in Sacramento back in 2003. Um, And I can, looking back now, I can see why they thought that was a little bit crazy, (laughs) but But the bottom line was I wanted to write, and I thought, well, I didn't know how to make a living doing that, so I opened this bookstore thinking I was going to sit in the back office and become the world's greatest novelist, and uh, it's all kind of humorous now because it turns out I was not a very good novelist, and I hated running a retail business, but I was quickly forced to learn all about small business marketing, and that I discovered I had a passion for. So that all kind of evolved into writing business books and business and marketing books and ultimately selling that store, going down my own publishing journey where I started with a self-published book, got several subsequent traditional publishing contracts, started speaking and being asked to consult and so ultimately sold that business and uh, launched a custom publishing company and it's just been a wild and crazy ride, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade any of it for anything. It's been great. Good. So you are a you said a self publishing company. Define for the listeners what that means, if you would. Basically, we do we're custom publishers, so we help people who want to self publish their books. They they pay us to produce the books. We kind of provide that one stop shop for busy professionals. We only produce nonfiction. But we do everything from the editing, the cover design, the interior design. We register barcodes and ISBNs. We set up distribution with Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com and Ingram. So, you know, the true form of self-publishing involves a lot of work. There's a lot of components to producing a book with getting your your editor and your designers and, and your printer quotes and everything set up. And we're kind of that place where you can stop and just have it all done in one place by professionals. We don't outsource overseas or anything like that. All of my um, entire team are publishing industry professionals with years of experience, and I think that's really important. If you're going to produce a book, especially one to enhance your business, 
you want it to be as professional as possible. Now, wh- why why would someone want to self-publish? I mean, this may seem like a very elementary question given my audience. I understand that. But I just wanted you to quickly address that question of why self-publish. Well, you know, as speaking as somebody who has been traditionally published several times, self-publishing is becoming more and more attractive to many of us. The traditional publishing contracts are difficult to get, first of all. They're time-consuming, and they don't pay very well. It's a big myth that you get these giant book advances and you make all kinds of money from a book. That's not the case at all. In fact, the average author makes $1 per book. So you might write a $20 financial guide, but you're going to be paid $1, $1.25 a copy. You might get a $7,000 book advance. And by the way, you won't see another penny of it until you've sold enough books to earn back that advance. So self-publishing has become much more um, popular. The stigma is gone, especially when you produce it professionally. And I think that's why it's just grown in popularity so much. No question about it. So how does one embark on this journey? So they've got the idea for, you You do nonfiction, right? So I don't want to say the great American novel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, but they've got, they've got an expertise. They've got experience in a certain industry, a certain business usually. And they think, why don't I just share my expertise with the world, write about it? And where does it all start? And what do they do first? And, and then what are the steps as they go along? Yeah, you know, first of all, I have to say that I'm a huge believer in a book can really help you grow your business. It is a credibility builder. It can help you book speaking engagements. Um, It gets you media attention. There's just so many benefits to um, being the author of a book. As far as getting started, you know, it starts with an idea. As entrepreneurs, many of us are kind of idea factories. We have lots and lots of ideas. Um, My suggestion is to definitely sit down and look at the competing books. Whatever book you're writing, there's other books out there. There should be similar books out there because that shows there's a market for your topic. But you want to make sure that you can differentiate your book from what's already out there. How is your book going to be different or better? And I think it's important to determine that before you even begin writing so that you know what you're, what you're writing about and also who your target audience is going to be for your book. These are two really important elements that a lot of people miss. And then they end up writing the same book that's been written 15 other times, right? So it really starts with understanding what other books are out there so that you can position yours to really stand out. And then, and then you start with the whole writing process, which is different for everyone. I personally like to start with an outline, and I, I kind of chisel away at it to get it done. And, uh, and it's a process of dedicating some time, and it, it doesn't have to be as hard as people think it is. <laughs> sure. Yeah, very, very good. So, and that's what I was really going to say. When you were talking about the fact that published authors that are published by publishing companies, they just really don't make any money usually. It's a dollar a book type idea. And there's obviously no money in that, we all know. But what it does, what the book does is it really, it can increase one's speaking fees. If they're a paid speaker, it can increase exposure for their business. It's really kind of the new business card in a way. There are so many books published. It's almost like if you want to be known as an expert in your field, you need to have a book nowadays. It's it's not like, oh gosh, they're an author. Ooh, that's so amazing. A lot of people are authors nowadays and, and this is sort of the new the new basic hoop that a lot of business people need to jump through just as a standard practice, isn't it? I couldn't agree more. Yeah, it's almost like you expect someone who's an expert to have written a book. And if they haven't written a book, it kind of raises an eyebrow. Well, why haven't you written a book yet? Right. Because that's what you do. Yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. Very good point. Well, it sounds like a lot of work to write a book. I mean, any any tips that people can use on actually getting it done? Ghostwriters, do-it-yourself, collaborators? What, what's a good methodology? All of the above. You know, I, I can tell you my process, um, which has worked really well, I'm on my seventh book now, is I use the old storyboard method where I get a stack of three by five cards or post it notes and I start writing down every topic that I want to cover in the manuscript, every minute detail, and I spread that out before me. I may spend a couple of days getting all those thoughts out. And then I start to move them around until they logically become chapters. You know, I'm organizing them into chapters. And then I copy that into an outline. 
and begin chiseling away at that outline. It feels like such a huge deal to write a book from scratch. But for those who like writing, it's really not as big of a deal as it sounds. It's really a matter of writing a bunch of articles, if you think about it that way. And also, the average book manuscript is about 60,000 words, and 1,000 words is about three typed pages. So if you could commit to writing three pages a day, you'd have an entire manuscript in 60 days. So when you look at it that way, I think it's a lot less intimidating, and it really it really is all it takes to put that manuscript together. And then, of course, you do have your book coaches, your ghost writers. You can um, use Dragon, naturally speaking, software to, to transcribe audio. There, there's just so many options. So, gosh, I, I don't know which question I want to ask first here. I, I apologize. Talk about the money. You know, how much does it cost to do this? Maybe you want to talk about some of the charges that your firm actually charges, so it's realistic. What kind of budget is an author looking at to get a book off the ground? There's a lot of components involved. Professional editing, I think, is one of the most important things that you can do for your book. It's the biggest time that a book is self-published if it's been edited by a friend or a relative or a spouse, and that happens a lot, unfortunately. So you've got to invest in professional editing. You've got to have a professional cover design. In your layout, it's not just a matter of formatting a Word document. It's putting it into InDesign and really paying attention to details. So these are labor-intensive things. I can tell you that for us, our publishing packages start at $6,000. That's an all-inclusive with cover design, interior layout, things like that. There are other custom publishers who charge far more than we do, and there are just as many that charge less. So you really want to pay attention to those details when you're shopping for a service. Ask them where their um, people are located, who's going to be doing the actual work on your book. And then also look at things like, what is your book going to cost you to purchase? I see this as a big uh, challenge for people who go in and get these low-cost, kind of the big box publishing solutions and then find out that they have to pay seven, eight, ten dollars $10 per book. So there's a lot of factors to consider in all of that, but I'd say from an overall budget perspective, when you factor in the fact that you need to do some marketing and maybe do some publicity campaigns, I would say eight to ten thousand um, dollars is is a good starting point. When you talk about costs, Stephanie, should one even publish a printed book anymore with the with the amazing success of Kindle and other ebook readers? Should someone just go direct to electronic publishing? And my firm answer to that is no. You still need both. Kindle books are on fire. Amazon announced earlier this year that they're outselling all books on the site, which is phenomenal. But you're still missing half the reading market. Right? Not everybody has a Kindle or an iPad to read a book on. Plus, you know, it's that tangible. It's something that you can mail out to contacts or sell at the back of the room if you speak. So um, I firmly believe that you need to have both because otherwise you're you're missing one or the other. Even if you just put it into print, you're still missing a huge chunk of the market if you're not making it available in ebook. Yeah, so so not just ebook. The other thing is that tangibility of being able to hand that book to someone that you meet at a networking event is really cool too, isn't it? It's incredibly cool. And to mail it out to media contacts, um, you want to have that physical product. Plus, I mean, what a huge accomplishment to write a book. Why not be proud of that? And uh, I give my book away like crazy to the right contacts because that's that's how you continue to build that buzz. What, what is your per book cost, though? If you're thinking of you want to mail out books to maybe 100 media contacts to give away it to influential people, networking events, whatever it is, what is the cost per book looking like? And, and maybe before you even answer that question, tell us, is there an ideal size for a book? You did mention 60,000 words, I believe. How many pages is that? What size, format, because this all influences cost. So maybe you want to go into that first and then answer the the cost question so people can can kind of budget their printed copies. Yeah, you know, we're talking mostly trade paperback, which, by the way, is the most economical way to go. Very few authors are using hardcover because it it costs twice as much. Trade pay, and you'll even notice that from the big publishers, trade pay rack is far more common these days. As far as your per, and six by nine, by the way, is my favorite trim size, but you can do eight by five. If you've written a smaller manuscript, say 30,000 words, you probably want to go with a smaller trim size to make the book look a little bit more substantial. 
from the define trim book. size, if you would, just for the people. Uh, who don't the, know. the actual size of the book, the dimensions of the book. So a six by nine trade paperback is probably the most common trim book trim size. And then you've got your eight by five or your eight and a half by five and a half. If you look at your bookshelf, they're probably all somewhere within that range. And so what is the number of, what's the page count look like in there? Well, you know, depending on your word count, I can tell you that from my experience, very few authors actually end up with a 60,000 word manuscript. We're seeing a lot of 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 word manuscripts, and that's totally fine. The traditional publishers are the ones who set the 60,000 word standard. And, you know, the beauty of self-publishing is you set your own standard. So your book could be anywhere, on average, I'd like to see 150 pages because it looks substantial, 150 to 250 pages. If you're going beyond that, you might want to look at, you know, do you need multiple books? Should you pull a chapter out, make it a bonus? A a thick book can overwhelm people, and it also adds to your cost for printing. Uh, I could tell you from our standpoint, a 150-page book costs less than $4.00. Um, And it also depends on how many you purchase. We do a print-on-demand. So um, the more that you order, the less that it costs. So, you know, you could be getting those as as little as $2 and some change, depending on how many you order. Yeah, and then what kind of quantities would those be for $2 and change? You're probably looking at over 1000 at that price. Well, that's not that much. I mean, that's the great thing about print-on-demand nowadays. 1000 is a pretty small quantity, really. So basically someone spent maybe $2,500 and they've got 1,000 books. So that's a phenomenal marketing opportunity. It really is. And that includes a, a color cover, right? Always a color cover, absolutely. Cover interior, now that's a whole different story, and that also really increases the cost. Right, right. Black and white interior, color cover, professional binding, very important. So someone did the printed book now, and let's assume that they want to also capture the Kindle and ebook reader market. How do they do that? Does your company offer that service there? We definitely do ebook formatting. The wonderful thing about ebooks is there's so much flexibility in this market. Amazon allows you to set up your own digital publishing account with them. So what we do for our clients is we format the books and then um, help them set up their own publishing account. So we're not taking any of their ebook royalties. We set them up directly with Amazon. Amazon, depending on how you set the price for your ebook, if it's nine ninety nine or less, Amazon is going to pay you a seventy percent royalty. It's really, um, it's really good royalty rate. If you price it over nine ninety nine, Amazon only pays you thirty five percent. So clearly, what they're doing is really pushing um, authors to price their books at nine ninety nine or less on ebook format. But it works out pretty well. It's very easy to set up. And then the other option that we've been recommending is to publish with Smashwords. And I'll spell that at smashwords.com, S-M-A-S-H-W-O-R-D-S, smashwords.com. This is a, a brilliant service where you, ha- you format your manuscript to their guidelines, which is kind of a stripped-down Word document. And they put the manuscript through their proprietary technology called the Meat Grinder, and that produces your ebook in nine different formats. So they distribute for the Barnes & Noble Nook, for the iPad and iPhone. They've got wonderful distribution channels. There's no upfront fee to do that. And Smashwords pays you 85% of the fees that they collect from the various outlets that they distribute to. But Smashwords doesn't include Kindle, though, right? They, They actually produce a Kindle version, but they do not distribute directly to Amazon's Kindle store as of yet. Okay, so in other words, Smashwords does the formatting for Kindle. Let me just make sure uh, the listeners understand that. Does Smashwords do formatting for Kindle, and then all of the others, they do formatting and distribution. Is that correct? That's correct. So so you'll have a Kindle version available on your Smashwords account, but it's not going to be available in the Kindle store, so you still have to do a separate formatting on your own for the Kindle store, because you can't download your format and and send it over to the Kindle store. But the two together, the the Kindle setup and the Smashwords setup, covers all your major retail outlets. 
Fantastic. Yeah, great. Boy, the opportunities nowadays for publishers, Stephanie, it's so much better than it's ever been uh, in terms of the opportunity to get one's message out there. We, we've gone through a lot of that. Talk to us a little bit more, if you would, and, and maybe we'll kind of wrap up with some stuff on this about marketing. Obviously, it's great to have the book. Certainly, people can use it in very organic ways, just kind of locally. They can send out them out, they can give them out, etc. And they can also sell them. But again, the the play on a book is usually not to make direct money, or I should say profits, to make direct profits from the book unless someone is famous or they're going to really, really sell a lot of books, right? It's mostly a credibility booster. You know, if someone's got a consulting business or, or, or whatever, infopreneur, they can get more gigs, they can get more consulting, they can get more speaking engagements, they can get more clients. And, and that's where the money usually comes. But Talk to us a little bit more about that, about one's view of maybe the business model of being an author and and the marketing opportunities out there. Yeah, you know, you're so right about that. The good news is with self-publishing, you will make more per book than you would with a traditional publisher. So, you know, with your distribution with the retailers of Amazon, Barnes & Noble.com, they're going to take a big percentage off the top. Uh, we set discounts to 40%. So Amazon would like 55 We set them to 40% off the retail price. And then what's left, you deduct the cost of your printing, and what's left is your royalties. So most of our authors are seeing 4 to $6 royalty earned per book sold online, which is really good. Now, of course, when you sell your book yourself, you make even more because if you're buying your book at, you know, $3, you know, whatever your, your, your quantity you're purchasing them at, you're potentially making 10 or $12 when you're selling them at the back of the room. But the bottom line is you still have to sell a heck of a lot of books to make um, a decent living, and very few authors actually make their living strictly off of books. Mm-hmm. Unless your last name is you know, King or Grisham. Right, <laughs> or like Steele or something like that, yeah. <laughs> or Steele, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or Colin Powell, so, uh, <laughs> whatever, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So you're right. It's all about how you use that book to create more business for yourself. Um, You know, it was a big surprise to me when I published my first book. It was a business startup guide. And I started getting people calling asking for consulting. I wasn't a consultant at the time. I wasn't a speaker at the time. And I was starting to get invitations to speak. And a lot of us speak for business. We'll go to our local chamber or whatever, maybe do a speech. But let me tell you, paid speaking can be very lucrative. And a book can really help open doors for you to get paid speaking opportunities, more consulting. You can create workshops. You can build a whole brand around your book. Um, one of my favorite authors who's done that is Jim Haran. He wrote a great book called The One-Page Business Plan. I've been recommending that book for years. And how many pages is the book? I just have to ask. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I don't know how many pages his book is, but it's a it's a big size. It's a eight and a half by eleven, and it comes with a CD of business plan templates. And Jim Haran self published and produced that book. I don't know how many years ago, probably ten or more years ago. And what I most love about what he's done is he has built a whole brand and a whole company around that book. So he certifies other consultants on his one page business plan methods. They pay him to go through his certification program, and then they go out and teach his methods and sell his books. So he's created these agents for his company, and it's brilliant, and it's a really good book. And it's also launched a whole series of books. So there are so many ways that you can take that book and really build all kinds of revenue around it. You mentioned info products, one of my favorite things. Create a companion workbook. Build uh, audio programs. Record yourself giving a workshop and sell that. The book is just the first step in what becomes a world of opportunity. Well, good stuff. Give out your website, if you would, and tell people where they can learn more. Yeah, it's authoritypublishing.com. I also run businessinfoguide.com, and um, we accept guest articles. We welcome any business listeners to contribute there. But um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm bizauthor, B-I-Z-A-U-T-H-O-R. And, you know, I would love to hear from any of your listeners. Fantastic. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much. Stephanie Chandler, and you also have stephaniechandler.com. So thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. My pleasure. Now you can get Jason's Creating Wealth in Today's Economy Home Study Course. 
all the knowledge and education revealed in a nine-hour day of the Creating Wealth Boot Camp, created in a home study course for you to dive into at your convenience. For more details, go to jasonhartman.com. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at jasonhartman.com. This show offers very general information. Opinions of guests are their own. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.